of all, um, uh oh, she wrote all... something down. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's my website. Okay. Well. <laughs> <I'm> not stupid. <laughs> um, the reason why I asked those of you, I asked you, we're, we're an intimate but powerful group, I think. Everyone here is <clears throat> someone who's very committed to our community. Uh, many people are very committed to our waterways. And uh, so I wanted to make sure that you knew uh, who John is and what he stands for and what a great opportunity we have to elect him um, to the Board of Trustees. So so this is him, this is John. You <laughs> <laughs> want to cut out instead. <laughs> I think we need the kind of uh, technological expertise that John has to start talking seriously, really, about about our problems with our waters. Everybody here is a community activist, uh, uh, advocate. Uh, in one way or the other, or a great supporter of the Democratic Party. So I can't introduce everybody, but Brad Bender, who is running for the town board, is also great. <laughs> with that, um, maybe if you can just talk a little bit and then take some questions if you would. Sure. I'm very proud of John. I hope he gets. And actually, one other thing, you know, the trustee race is a race that can be won with like 2,500 votes. It's a small number of votes, and I think he's already got them because he's been on the doors for months. So we've really well, we'll got see. a good opportunity. We'll All right. Take it away, John. Thank you. All right, John. I, I did want to say something about Bridget because every, everywhere I go, Bridget's been there before. Uh, you, know, you, you go to Nitrate, oh yeah, Bridget was here, you know, you go, you go down, oh, Bridget was here. So I want you to know on your council, you have somebody who's really, really working hard to get educated in this, in these issues, and, and not just looking at it as an academic exercise, but looking for solutions. And, and I, I like that, and, it's, and I appreciate you doing that, because it's really, really important. Because what the council does really affects what the trustees are inherit. We inherit the decisions that the council makes. We don't have control over these things, but we do have knowledge and we do have the ability to advise council people and anyone else who's willing to listen on the science of remediation. Every household produces roughly 30,000 gallons of wastewater. Every year, a swimming pool full of wastewater goes into our aquifer. 95 to 98% of that goes into the water. The rest is evaporated, goes into rain, actually ends up back in the system again anyway. Of that, almost 4,000 gallons comes from the F1. And the systems that we have in place now don't prevent that. But there are additional things that go into the ground. Pharmaceuticals, anything you flush down the ground, mm -hmm. anything gets there. Wastewater systems are great. Nitrix has a great system that uh, takes a lot of the nitrogen out, but doesn't take it all out. But we're not even beginning to discuss the other issue, which is the dissolved chemicals that are in the water that are not filtered. Nothing that we do now is going to solve this problem. There's no silver bullet. Ten years from now, you're going to start to see the results of improving uh, septic systems. But you're not going to see it overnight because you're inheriting the problems that happened with the boom of the ship. The nitrogen that comes out of septic systems ends up in, water, in our aquifer. Under our feet, uh, virtually 95 to 95% of the water that, that comes out of households ends up in the water on the That's what we do. We've, we've installed systems now where our population has come to a point, certain densities, we're producing far more nitrogen than we really should, and this is the cause of algal bloom that you've read so much about. The, the, the algae that Bridget's talking about here, why our bays are impaired just because of this, this issue. I can tell you what causes it and how it's caused, and I can also tell you how it can be solved. Uh, it's a, the thing that's stopping us is the political obstacles, I think, to get these things done, uh, and a, a misperception, if you will, on how to solve these problems. But on the other hand, it's the byproduct of democracy, and it's what we have to deal with, we have to come to consensus. I'm just saying, let's not take too long to come to consensus. Let's get some people on this board who can pound at the door, can make noise, can increase the transparency of the trustees, because their ultimate job is being stewards of the environment. The environment speaks to you in one way. It's not by voice, but by illustration. It will tell you when it's not feeling well, and it's not, and you can see it. You can all see it everywhere you go.
Yeah, I'd like to actually ask Brad a bridge of question. My, my thinking is that um, John is a slightly different trusty candidate than, than we're used to seeing. Yeah. You know, I think the other trusty candidates, so like what Anne was talking about before, you know, they're, they're sort of a reactive group maybe, you know. John, I think, would be perceived, if he wins, I think, you know, the light bulb sort of signifies the light bulb has gone off in the community. Would you think the same thing? Or? First of all, he will win. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. He will win. But second of all, yeah, I think you're right. I think it's, um, well, what I would say, I think it's a unique opportunity that we have to take on a trustee who is really knowledgeable, knowledgeable enough to be proactive, yeah. not to just say, you know, I mean, I think you need a balance on the trustees. I think the fishermen are very important. You know, we're losing John Semler. I think that's a real shame. Um, he served a long, long time. But that's why it's important, too, I think, because that John has spent time, you know, farming oysters and, you know, being in the water, diving, that kind of thing. You need that kind of love for the water that comes from being part of it, and, you know, working with it. But, um, but you have that combination in John, which I, I do think gives you the opportunity to see the problems coming. You know what I mean? He's an yeah. engineer. Engineers, what do they do? They look for problems. Yeah. <laughs> so back at you. <laughs> <laughs> but at any rate, it's a great question, and I think that I think I don't know what you think, Brad, but I think that there's there's an opportunity here to have a proactive trustee, and we should grab it with that kind of knowledge. I'm going to agree with that, Bridget. Um, a lot of uh, the problem with government is it tends to be reactive. And we don't have enough people in government that look to be proactive. And uh, with John's background, he's going to be a, a pro proactive member. So, uh, and I think that's something we need to bridge and I we need to look at how can we make other things in government proactive, not just not just the trustees, but really can we be more proactive uh, with our code enforcement? Can we be more proactive with other departments within the town? And so that we're not always playing catch up. I think this is the point we're at, uh, where we get good people that can start, you know, let's start working on these problems now, so that we're not catching up anymore. That we're ahead of the curve. So mm -hmm. I definitely think John's the right guy to be there for that. Mm -hmm. Another another thought on that too is that if we have partnerships between the town board and the trustees, we're more likely to make some real progress. Yeah. You know? Anne's group put together the Sustainability 400 Plus. I think everybody's aware of it now, but I have to say it's a great tool to allow us to be proactive. When, when the bay was red the other day, I came back and pulled out my iPad and looked for the water <laughs> issues and set a meeting with my legislative aide, and it would be great to have John also and someone from the town attorney's office to say, what can we start rolling out on yeah. this plan? Because And there is some proactive stuff in there. So I think that John could be somebody on the trustees who uses those kind of tools that the Green Committee is giving us and we can all work together to... Well, I'm a great that. supporter of the sustainability plan. Absolutely. And I hope you vote for me because I am so passionate about this. <laughs> I, I feel I have a few good fights left in me and this is, this is the biggest one of my life. So thank you very much. All right.